Welcome everybody. It's Len on a beautiful Medellin day. <clears throat> I'm just uh, waiting for my Uber for my day outing today. I'm going to the Botanical Gardens here in Medellin. So after a quick Uber, quick and inexpensive Uber ride from our apartment to uh, the Botanical Gardens, I'm just standing outside the Botanical Gardens here. Uh, which is also convenient if you were taking the metro. It's also uh, right at the metro station Universidad, the university uh, metro station, which is just behind me here. And out in front of the botan botanical gardens, we've got uh, a number of shops and vendors, and there's a mall. It, it appears though there's a mall across the street in the botanical gardens here and it's quite a busy area. It's not going now, but there's a misting spot over there. Uh, goes every few minutes. And across the street here is the botanical gardens. Uh, looks like you can have horse rides. And uh, Restaurants and vendors. So I'm just out front of the entrance into the gardens. So this is the line to get in. And then, as I was saying, I pre-registered. And you go to one of these tables here and uh, you give them your name and your ID number that you registered with online in advance of coming and then we'll just check you in and welcome you to the gardens and this is all the uh the rules with the garden and you come in to uh, a huge circular concrete area very nice Very, very cool. Welcome into the gardens. Immediately when you come in, you are met with a gift shop and right off to the side of the gift shop is a commercial nursery. So if you're really enjoying what you're seeing, you can go home with some of these beautiful plants. Um, obviously, we can't do that, but that's a nice thing for the locals to be able to take some of these things home and have them in their own garden. I got to show you this. This is just a huge tree. If you can see in context, the people standing next to it. And it's beautiful, straight up and a perfectly circular canopy at the top. Beautiful. You'd need, I'm thinking a number the trunk, if you were to put your arms around it, you'd need three or four people to circle that at least. At the very base there, you'd probably need a dozen people to hug that tree. I've only been here a few minutes, but um, I know <laughs> this will definitely be a, a recommended stop when you're, if you're in uh, Medellin. I'm going to go to the map and uh, give you a shot of that before I get lost without knowing where I'm going. Okay. 
looks like it's a, a huge area with close to 40 different areas. It's palm tree forest, tropical forest, desert garden, lagoon, Zamia's garden, medicinal garden, lab of urban agriculture, spices garden, magnolia collection, commercial nursery, It's a huge area. You can, uh, if you were coming here to do a photo set, you could register with the, the gardens to do that. So say if you're coming to do wedding photos or something, or family photos. Here's another beautiful, huge tree. Kind of twists on its way up and it has a huge canopy at the top. Looks like it's almost perfectly round. I wonder how old that tree is. What I really find neat about seeing this, uh, these gardens is that back home, we could have a huge tree, um, but it's only growing uh, half the year. The other half of the year, it's, it's dormant in winter and spring and fall. Whereas here in Medellin, these trees are growing 365 days of the year. And back home, we're lucky if we get a warm summer for two or three months. So it's really nice to be in this kind of climate. And I don't miss winter at all. While you're here, if you're hungry, there's a sit down restaurant. And uh, looks like you could get barbecued food here as well. That is the iconic tree I was just showing you. This tree for reference is right beside the uh, park map. It's not labeled as iconic, but it's very beautiful and huge. I can now see the importance of uh, these trees really give you a good look at the importance of a canopy in a forest. This tree at the bottom is relatively small, but you look at the canopy that it provides the shade and the habitat for all the animals and birds that could live in the canopy of a forest or a jungle. It's beautiful. The map of the area shows that there's about 18 different gardens, different areas, and it's designed kind of in a circular way. Um, that you go around a circle in the park. There's also a scientific center and a herb herbarium in here. So I'll try to show you as much as I can. And there's also restaurants, sit down restaurants. You can have a meal, really nice patio area in the restaurant. So I'll take you around and show you this beautiful place. I would say this is a definite must see. I've only been here a short while, but it's definite must see if you're here and it's free. Oh my gosh, we have a butterfly garden here with monarchs.
We're in the butterfly garden here. And some signage about butterflies and their habitat. Majority of butterfly species are found in the neotropical region close to the equator to which our country belongs. Butterflies from six of the seven known families can be found in Colombia and the neotropics. I've seen um, monarch butterflies in here, and if I'm lucky, I'll be able to zoom in on one of them. Here's a, a, a caterpillar. Um, caterpillar plant, I guess. Well, I guess the structure looks like it might be concrete or stone, and then they've got the local plants growing on it. Have some darker butterflies. I guess it's all these flowers that are bringing the butterflies. Just resting. Here we're going to take you into the tropical forest here section. Here uh, in the park, they've got some really nice signage. This sign is telling you about the Andes mountain range, which is the longest mountain range in the world. And it's uh, home to extraordinary biological diversity in hundreds of cultures and peoples. And also it says on this signage that one in 10 species, one in 10 species of plants worldwide are found in the Andes. That's amazing. Here we're in the Orchidiorama, where they have native orchids. The signage here about the lagoon is indicating that this is an example of the wetlands that used to be more predominant in the middle Medellin area, but a lot of the wetlands has been lost due to 
urbanization and uh, just the city, the growth of the city, which is unfortunate. So it's nice to see this little bit that's preserved here. Here we're coming into the desert garden. Look, but do not touch. Oh. And there's a tiny bird. And coincidentally, it feels very hot in here. This cactus almost looks like uh, a sea plant, the way it's so wavy. It's really cool about the fact that this is in the center of the city. Well, not quite geographically center, but in the middle of the city. Uh, it's a beautiful ecological sanctuary. I feel just completely relaxed walking through this place. It's very calming and relaxing. I can see if I lived in this city, spending a lot of time here. Here's an old rail car. Just a nice rest area. Hey everybody, I'm just sitting down after my day here in the Botanical Gardens, just to wrap up my day. I came here not knowing what to expect, um, but I was so very pleasantly surprised to, uh, with this day here. Um, I came by Uber 
which was very economical and easy to do. And uh, when I got here, I realized uh, that you could also, if you were here in Medellin and you couldn't get here by cab, walking or taxi, that you could also take the public transit. It's right in front of uh, one of the metro stations called Universidad. Um, so that's an option too for you to get here. It's also free to come here today. Um, it's free every day. And they ask that you pre-register uh, on their website when you when you come here, which I did, which made it a little easier. They, I think it's part of uh, them keeping track of the number of visitors they have. And when you get here, um, you just present yourself with your name and your ID number that you registered with, which was my passport. And then you just get to come in and, and see this beautiful place. So what I really enjoyed about this place is that it's like an ecological sanctuary in the middle of a bustling city. It's just so quiet and beautiful and green. Um, and there's multiple gardens and forests here to see with really good signage, to tell you what you're looking at. Um, there's the lagoon, you get, get to see some of the local wildlife. It, there's all this green space um, where families can hang out picnic style and just relax. And there was hundreds of families and groups here today and individuals just doing that, just coming here and putting a blanket out and just relaxing. And uh, around the lagoon and all through the park, there's restaurants, food stands, a uh, gift shop. There's a, a nursery where you can, if you're like a local, you can take some of these plants home and put in your own garden. Um, it's a gem in the city here. Um, if you're in Medellin, um, I would highly recommend you, you make the effort to come and see this. You can easily spend in a, a whole afternoon here, which is what I did. It's uh, open Tuesday to Sunday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, and I walked through it two or three times to make sure I got to see it all. Um, I appreciate you coming with me today to see the Botanical Gardens. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it it's just a beautiful, relaxing day. Nice way to spend your time. So thanks for coming with me. I, I hope you enjoyed uh, what I showed you of the, the, the botanical gardens here in Medellin. Thanks. Yeah. See you later. Bye for now.